Let's meet our first guest tonight. He's a fantastic <laughs> Emmy-nominated actor you know from Silicon Valley. Middle Diction Schwartz and his brand new sitcom on CBS called Be Positive. Please welcome the magnificent Mr. Thomas Middle Ditch. <laughs> Thomas, how are you? I'm pretty good. How are you, James? I'm loving this little bolo tie we're rocking today. Yeah, I'm a bolo tie corduroy boy. Yeah. <laughs> Not many people can be both. <laughs> Not many, but it's, I've done it. Yeah. 2020 is looking up. It's nice to see you. You always look sharp, other than the last time you were on the show, where you did look like... Wo I was worried you weren't going to make it out of your home. This is when... <laughs> We were doing the show early in lockdown. Mm. How are you? How have you been coping? Uh, great. Yeah, good, good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? It's nice to see the sun. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah no, I, I mean, look, hey, I spent a lot of time alone as a child. Uh, so when people were, when the world was like, hey, stay indoors by yourself, I was like, can do. I've been training for this my whole life. But you actually, you were quite busy, because I don't know if people know this, you're a pilot. Yes. And during lockdown, you, you've been, tell me what it was you do, you're flying rescue dogs around the country here <laughs> here and there now look uh, uh, yeah i take little trips uh sometimes for myself and then sometimes i, I sign up with this organization pilots and pilots in paws yeah and you know they'll have dogs or cats or something that need uh you know transport from a shelter that's too full to a shelter that has room or to a, like a forever home and you can kind of as a pilot volunteer and sort of say i'll 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 take them and then you'll end up in like Redding, California or someplace in New Mexico and be like, all right, well, let's check this place out for a weekend. Uh, but then, you know, on the way, you've done something nice. It's just a way of pay it forward. I feel very fortunate that I can fly a plane. So, yeah. <laughs> so how many dogs are on the plane or what's the most dogs you've had? Nothing crazy. I have a ti it's a tiny plane, a little four seater. So I've had uh, a passenger and then three other dogs. And there was a, a little scruffy terrier who was not in a good mood. But it's okay. He went to bed. A massive Doberman pincher, and then this tiny little like Chihuahua puppy thing that was riding co-pilot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and and you know sometimes I had I had two bull terriers that like they were really a lot of energy, and I was like these guys are going to be a handful. And I put one of them in a crate, and just as I was taking off, I was like, oh, what's that smell? And I thought the dog had like made a big old doo doo. Yeah. Uh, it was just a poo uh, a, a toot. It was uh, just a fart. Okay. So. <laughs> I landed, well, well, I, I landed expecting to, like, shovel out all this yeah. crud, but it was, you know, nervous, just a little toots. Well, that's a... <laughs> happens to everybody. That's a lovely story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Yeah, the story it's is... a lovely story. If you need a summary, it's one time I brought a dog in a plane and mm. I thought it made a duty, but don't worry, it just made a toot. I think we've got it. I think we've got it. <laughs> so, uh, how have things been going for me in quarantine? Fantastic. <laughs> now, you're such a brilliant comedic performer. I, I do... You're, you're so great. And what I didn't know is early in your career, you kind of got your stripes performing comedy on a cruise ship. Yeah. I, I'm interested to know what that's like. Uh... Working on that cruise ship was one of the most surreal, kind of weirder parts of the whole journey of being an entertainer. Yeah. Yeah, I... Yeah, I mean... It was like a... It was like a mix of, um like endless leisure time and then and then no escape so it's like a, it was like a luxury prison because you're on a boat and you can't go anywhere and there's all these rules that you have to abide by but at the same time like at you know 11 at night you can go get crepes and, <laughs> <laughs> and that was like my first experience with like real because the first cruise you did two tours for like four months i did two tours and the first one was out in new york city and that was like the first time i met you know like Long Island, Staten Island, like Guido's with a haircut and all that. Yeah. And you, you, would, you wouldn't do the... Sh before doing the show, you're just like a person on the cruise. And then after you do the show, which everyone basically sees, so like two, 3,000 people see this Second City comedy show, then you walk around and it's like, oh, Second City, let me buy you a shot. This guy's hilarious. Hey, you're going to be on SNL. And you're like, ah, uh, getting nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a gun. <laughs> so that was kind of... Fun to be, you know, the the champion of of the Guidos, and then uh, then later then the fall then the fall tour happens. Then you go up like Bar Harbor, go to like um, Quebec City and stuff like that to watch the leaves change. And now all those party boys are gone, and it's just like 
They put on Andrews Sisters in the PA. It's like everyone's in bed by 7 p.m. Oh, wow. Yeah. But a short line at the crepe stand. You know it, my man. <laughs> now, let's congratulate you on your brilliant uh, new sitcom, Be Positive. It premiered uh, on CBS last week. It's had the most incredible reviews. Uh, for anyone who hasn't caught it yet, tell them what it's about and who you play. Well, uh, I, I play a man who needs a kidney transplant, and uh, he doesn't have a long list of friends, and he goes through them all pretty quickly. And uh, he stumbles upon someone he hasn't known since high school. She's a bit of a mess, but she very generously offers to donate her kidney. And it's the coming together of, very, of two very different worlds. Have you enjoyed, because obviously Silicon Valley was, is, you know, single camera out on... The location. Have you enjoyed doing a more traditional network comedy? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, we were talking, I was talking to Reggie before, how, like, in a, being in a world of, like, alt comics, of just basically going up in the smallest venues possible and basically doing the most alienating comedy I can think of, uh, to do something so, uh, with such, you know, big appeal is, is fun. I mean, it, the, perf the delivery of it is kind of like a play. You're on sets that don't have a yeah. wall, right? And the pilot, we got to shoot in front of an audience and was like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I get the exchange. And now, now we're just holding for laughs <laughs> with about that, without the crew going, ha, <laughs> <laughs> And then they, what, and then they'll show that to an audience of people and put the laughs on. Yeah, to be honest, I actually don't know their, their process. They may have, they may, I'm sure they've got hours and hours and hours of free, of laughs recorded that they can, like, Someone told me, oh, Mike Judge told me a story about um, Mike and, Al and Alec Burke, who, who was on, uh, who wrote for Seinfeld, yeah. how they would go, and there's, apparently there's a guy, I don't know if he still works in the business, but apparently there's a guy who does the laugh tracks for a lot of sitcoms. He's been in the biz for a long time, and he'll watch it, and he's got this kind of like old, archaic machine who just, he like does all these sliders and like fades in the laughs, and there's like foot pedals, and like, no. yes, it's like a Terry Gilliam machine of like, oh, <laughs> and he is like apparently the most stoic man. So he's just this, like, deadpan man, like, controlling all the laughter. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the legend. That's the legend.